on my shoulders has fallen the onerous but extremely pleasant and honored task of welcoming the President, Sri Pranam Mukherjee. I would particularly like the young minds that have come here from the land across almost the seven seas. That President Pranam Mukherjee has guided the ship of state in every realm of state endeavor before he assumed the office of the President of India. Sir, the University of Delhi is striving at this point in time to bring about a sea change in the way we perceive education and your hand guides us and allows us to do good things. Amongst those things, the university feels extremely sensitively is the need to bring about change in the mindsets of all of us towards those who have special needs. Some months ago, the university sent a team of physically challenged students to King's College and the University of Edinburgh. They came back from there enriched, enlightened, and with a zest to do similar things in India. In similar fashion, we have invited students from the University of Edinburgh and King's College, and I believe much good will come. Universities need to engender ideas, and this is a program which has direct blessings of your own office when meeting of vice chancellors took place in January, which the president holds every year. He laid great emphasis on the Connect to India program and at the auspices of which we are all gathered here today. I welcome each one of you on this occasion and above all, I welcome this occasion. We will also, sir, be presenting you with a map, which is a tactile map meant for visually challenged students of the campus. And to my mind, this is certainly a first for any university in India, but it is also probably a first for many universities abroad. My name is William Edward Bell Stewart. I'm 20 years old and a student of King's College London reading geography. As a participant of the Connect to India program, I've had the opportunity to learn and grow with students and staff from Delhi University. The, per the program is underpinned by a set of strong values. Firstly, of honesty and openness in dialogue around disability. We have recognized our own limitations and where progress needs to be made. We have been lucky enough to meet with academics and leaders from the field of disability advocacy over the last 10 days. During discussions with Dr. Nimesh Desai, Director of the Institute of Behaviour and Applied Sciences, we had the opportunity to openly discuss progress on the diagnosis of specific learning difficulties in India. We also talked openly about policy challenges that educators face when trying to support students. Dr. Desai, Desai was interested in learning about our own experiences of living with specific learning difficulties. In discussion, it became clear that in both countries there is stigma attached to disability. This stigma can impact on a student's attainment as they are reluctant to receive help and be labelled. Our universities have a responsibility <coughs> to us as students to be proactive in driving forward the disability agenda. Similarly, our governments have a responsibility to support students with disabilities enacting and enforcing strong legislation to ensure the vulnerable are not left behind as our two economies grow. The Connect to India program has energized us to take responsibility, to commit to advocating for the disabled so we can assist in creating more inclusive society. On behalf of King's College London, I would like to thank the University of Delhi, the Vice Chancellor, Professor Dinesh Singh, as well as the British Council for this fantastic collaborative opportunity. Honourable President, respected Vice-Chancellor Dell University, staff and friends, we would like to extend a heartfelt thank you to the team of Dell University for organising the Connect to India programme, especially Professor Dinesh Singh, who has been responsible for this at its inception. Projects such as these are only possible due to the strong links between the University of Edinburgh and India. 
This relationship dates as far back as 1876, when the University of Edinburgh was proud to honour its first Indi uh, Indian graduate, and since then, this relationship has flourished. Projects such as these are, as an, are an excellent opportunity for learning on many levels, educational, cultural, and even personal reflection. We have received an incredible insight into the situation for persons with disabilities in India, the acts and policies, facilities available, and the perception of disabilities, and how these translate to the individuals themselves. Furthermore, on a visit to the Cluster Innovation Centre at Delhi University, we saw the practical application of projects which addressed education, academia, and industry. Of particular interest at the centre was a project to approve improve the ability of police to interact with sign language users. All of us from Edinburgh feel there is scope for the university to extend itself in this direction and involve undergraduates in social change and innovation. We have all benefited greatly from this opportunity, having been educated on many important issues and being able to witness and participate in this beautiful cultural experience. Some of us will definitely want to come back at some point and do more work in this sphere. This trip has made me seriously reassess how I view my own disability and how I should convey it to others. We feel this program has been amply named, as at the end of this beautiful journey, we leave feeling connected to India. I welcome all of you to this historic building which has witnessed many important contemporary events which have turned the history of modern world. Constructed by the, the then British government over a period of almost two decades, from 1911 to 1931. This building has been the abode of the mightiest empire at that point of time between the First World War and the Second World War, the British Empire. First occupant, Lord Arwin in 1931, to the last occupant, as representative of the British government in India, Lord Mountbatten, up to May 1948. And he has a very interesting feature in his tenure. In the first half of his tenure, he was the representative of the British government in India, appointed by the British king. And in the second half of his tenure, he was the representative and head of the Indian state, representing the state, the same person, Lord Mountbatten. It symbolizes one important aspect of our relation between India and UK, that yes, we parted company from each other, which lasted for 190 years, but we parted company not with hatred, but with understanding and affection. That symbolizes the last Governor General of British Empire became the first Governor General of Independent India. I am happy to welcome you to this historic building. Now coming back to the current event, I am indeed happy to be amidst you, to meet the students and faculty members from King's College London and University of Edinburgh, Scotland. India and the United Kingdom shared a long tradition and history as well as multifaceted relationship. Your presence here this evening is an important manifestation of the goodwill and trust which both countries enjoy. I appreciate the efforts of the University Grants Commission and Delhi University to organize a 10-day short-term course, Disability and Inclusion, 
perceptions and issues in contemporary India under the Connect to India program. Through the UGC, Concept to India program, I invite you to gain insights into our educational system as well as an understanding of our rich cultural heritage and society. Hopefully, there will be many more exchanges and collaborative collaborations, collaborative research programs in future, which will serve as an impetus in furthering excellence in higher education across the globe. I hope the 10 days course which you are attending will leave imprints on the diverse of Indian culture and social potential of this country on your mind. My best wishes to all of you, very purposeful, productive stay in India and happy return to your own home, carrying sweet memory of your days in India. Thank you, dear students, ladies and gentlemen. Jai Hind!